riches on
sing it like you mean it. And oh. side door teens. Uh, we've got an issue going on on the front door, and so be sure not to use that side door. All right. Uh, Leviticus chapter number 16, and we'll read a few verses here and see what the Lord has for us. Um, I'm not, uh, by, I'm by no means a scholar when it comes to uh, all of the uh, Levitical priesthood, nor of the uh, uh, Judea, Judaism and all of their uh, holidays and all that. But um, as I was uh, preparing to preach, I, I've got a message in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that I've been trying to preach for almost two months, and uh, the Lord has not given me liberty to do that, and it keeps changing things up on Wednesday night and uh, I'm just trying to follow him but Leviticus chapter 16 is where uh, the Lord led me to I remember years ago I think it was about 2004 that uh, me and a couple preacher friends of mine were sitting over here in the fellowship hall that we used to live back there some of y'all don't know that well we didn't live there we just lived there on the weekends and uh, we were sitting back there and I put together uh, some of the thoughts that I'm going to share tonight uh, with you, and uh, I hope it will be a help to you. Leviticus 16, and verse number 1. The Bible said, And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of uh, the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. Let me just pause right here. This is not the message, but uh, it is serious business when we go to worship in God and how we worship God. Uh, it could very well be that God decides that he'll take our life as well. <laughs> we get that in 1 Corinthians 11 as well. He said there's some of you that, that are sick and some of you sleep uh, because you have sin in your life uh, when you go to partake of the Lord's Supper. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all uh, at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat which is upon the ark that he die not for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering he shall put on the holy linen coat he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle and with the linen miter and shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron 
Aaron shall offer his bullet of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take uh, the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon the, uh, which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray God for the next little while that, Lord, you'd make preaching easy for us. I need your help. I need your touch. I pray, God, that you would do for us, Lord, what only you can do. And, Lord, have your will, have your way in what's said, what's done. I thank you, God, for all that you've done in my life. Thank you, God, for the atonement that was made for me. Thank you for a sacrifice that was made on my behalf so that I could have fellowship with you. Now, Lord, I pray that you take this next little while, open the words of your book, open our eyes, open our heart, and Lord God, may we receive that that you have for us. We'll thank you. We'll bless you. We ask these things in the name of Jesus and God's people said. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll preach tonight around the day of atonement. If you uh, have watched your calendar, you may have seen the two words, Yom Kippur. Uh, that is the Jewish day of atonement. They uh, are celebrating that, I guess, until six o'clock. Uh, now it started last night at six o'clock and went till uh, tonight at six o'clock. Uh, but without going into a whole lot of detail around that, uh, these verses here in Leviticus um, teach us some of the happenings and some of what the rituals that they would uh, follow on the Day of Atonement. And I want to take a look at those and see how those can apply to us. I'm thankful that I don't have to go searching out for a goat. I don't have to go searching out for a lamb. I don't have to go and find a bullet, nor do I need to find an oxen somewhere or even two turtle doves. I'm thankful some 2,000 years ago, the Lamb of God, I was slain for the sins of all mankind. I'm thankful that God paid the price uh, so that you and I could be saved and washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank the good Lord uh, uh, that he paid the price. Uh, he paid the penalty. He done what nobody else could do. Uh, he done what a priest couldn't do. Uh, he done what a lamb couldn't do. Uh, he done what a goat couldn't do. Uh, he done what the ram that was caught uh, in the thicket could not do. Uh, but I'm glad, hallelujah, today uh, I'm saved. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, I'm saved uh, and washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I believe that you and I can rejoice. I believe you and I should rejoice in our salvation. I believe, I mean, there's a lot of people get happy about a whole lot of stuff. I mean, if you want a million dollars and if the publisher's clearinghouse come your way, uh, you'd be cutting a rug, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd be happy, happy, happy. Uh, you'd be all beside yourself. Some of you, if you scratched off I know who I'm talking to. Some of y'all, if you scratched off and got the right numbers, man, you'd be all kind of happy. My, my. Uh -huh. But what about? 
the day that Jesus washed all your sins away? What about whenever Jesus uh, uh, bled and died? Uh, you won the lottery in that. Uh, that. There were many, many, many uh, that should have uh, and could have taken your place. But God said, I love him uh, like he's my only child. Uh, and he gave his son for you and I. I want to uh, take a notice and take mention of a few of the rituals that were done on the Day of Atonement. And I believe those can be a help to us when we think about that. Look with me, if you will, in verse number seven, there was a selection that took place. The selection of the goats. Verse seven said, and he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, verse 8 goes on to say, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. There was a selection that was made. Verse number 5 in our text said that those two kids came out of the congregation. They were of the people. They were uh, ones that he would choose out of that group. Uh, so their source was uh, they were ordinary goats that God would use to do extraordinary things. I'm glad that God's not looking for a great big eye and he's not looking down on a little bitty you. But God's looking for anybody that'll make their self available to him. Anybody that'll just say, God, here I am, send me. These goats uh, were of the congregation. Listen to what the Bible said in the, in the book of Isaiah 53. He shall uh, grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Uh, what the Isaiah prophesied was is that Jesus would come one day and that he would be I, 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 just like you and I. He would be a normal man. It was their source. And in verse 5 said they came from the congregation. Now, verse number seven, uh, the Bible says this, and he shall take uh, the two he goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, let me let me pause and we'll, we'll maybe talk about this in just a little bit. Some of you are thinking just like I am, thinking about Passover and atonement. The day of Passover. That's around Easter. Jesus was crucified and rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave at Passover time. When they were in Egypt and God sent judgment on that land, it was during the Passover time. That's when he said, you take one lamb, you put it up. And he said, if your house is too little, then get beside, get with your neighbor beside you because your house might be too little for the lamb, but the lamb is never too little for the house. Somebody needs to help me right there. And he said, that, that Passover lamb was to be put up and it was supposed to, was to be without spot and without blemish. And it would be offered. And whenever I passed through, the angel would pass through and he would see the blood on the doorpost, on the windows. He would pass over. And hallelujah. Thanks be to God. He's our Passover, but he's also our atonement. I talked about, I'll, I'll help you with that in just a minute. That atonement speaks of forgiving or pardoning sin that enables us to be reconciled between or a reconciliation to happen between sinful man and holy God. Here's the way I remember it. When you see the word atonement, 
Just write down just what it says. At one meant. Atonement. At, it means that I am sinful. He is holy. There's a separation between us. But because of the atonement, we are made one. At one with God. There is a propitiation that takes, that's a great big Bible word, and it means that God, in his wrath towards sin, chooses and has to judge sin, but because he is our atonement, because he is our propitiation, his wrath was poured out on Jesus and not on us. I say hallelujah for the Passover, hallelujah for the propitiation, hallelujah for the atonement that I find in him. The goats were presented before the Lord. The Bible said there in verse number seven, said, present them before the Lord. When they were presented to the Lord, they were deemed holy. I'm thankful that God will take people like you, people like me, and when we present ourselves before God, we can be called holy. Not because I did anything good. I, I, I promise you, I, we, we, we filled that baptism up. We have drained it out many, many, many times. Not one time have I watched sins go down that drain. Not one time have I watched the water wash away sin. But oh, there's been many times, there's been hundreds of times. I've looked at these altars and seen sinners come to know Jesus and the blood washed away all. Hebrews 4 and verse 15 said that we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Sanctification. He did it without sin. I believe you ought to live right. I believe you ought to be holy. The Bible said, First Peter, be you holy, but I am holy. I believe we ought to strive to do that just as best as we can. But the truth is, you're going to fail, and I'm going to fail. There's been times we fail miserably. But I'm, th hallelujah. I'm thankful that the blood still avails. I'm thankful that the atonement is still available for the child of God. I, uh, verse number 8 says this, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat they remember in the Old Testament that the Holy Spirit did not indwell a man the Holy Spirit could not indwell us because we were not washed on the inside when God would choose to do something and use a man, the Holy Spirit would come on him, but it never resided in him. When Jesus died, rose again, he said that I'm going to go and prepare a place for us. He said also in John chapter number 17, I believe it is, that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would come after that he was gone. See, what had to happen is Jesus, the goat, the scapegoat, the Lamb of God, the atonement for our sin, the Passover, he had to die. But he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And when he did, there was a way for holy God to be made at one with sinful man. And I'm glad, hallelujah, for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost that takes place. When I got saved, I got all the Holy Ghost there was. Jesus moved in. He kicked the devil out. And I've been living and knowing that the Holy God of heaven lives on the inside of me. Their separation, look at verse number 8, said that they were cast lots. That's where I was going. They would, they would use this thing called Urium and Thurium. Even as far as Acts chapter number 1, remember whenever the 
that Judas had hung himself and they were going to replace him and they cast lots to do that. They picked Matthias. As far as I can read, as far as I know, Matthias never did anything that would be worthy of a, the title of an apostle because that wasn't God's choice. God's choice would come a little bit later and his name was Saul that would later turn to Paul. That was who God chose. He would be the apostle born out of due season. But God said, I'm going to pick him. I'm going to use him. And, and, and as they cast lots there, they did the only thing they knew. In fact, God told them how to do it. He said there would be a separation. There would be the Lord's goat. Verses 15 through 19. You know, I, I won't read that for a second time. Uh, there would be an atoning sacrifice. Then there would be a living goat, the scapegoat. That would be verses 20 through 22. I, 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 I'll, I'll jump on the, into that here in just a moment. I, uh, I asked Brother Robert to sing that song on purpose. Uh, in 1922, they say that there was a mother who had been praying for her boy. And she left a poem out on the piano, hoping that her son would find that poem, he would read it, and it would speak to his heart. Sure enough, they loved to play the piano, so he often would spend time there. As he sat down, he saw those words, and those words gripped his heart. He began to <laughs> sing a tune that was in his heart that he had been working on and that tune he put these the words of that poem with that tune see he was struggling he was in the middle of trying to figure out what God's will was for him he had been offered a music career with NBC instead he chose the life of ministry and the life of serving God a few years would pass and he became acquainted with, began to serve alongside of a young evangelist by the name of Billy Graham. He sang these words to multiply millions all over the world. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be, uh, be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand. Oh, than to be a king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. There was a selection that took place. I wonder have we, I, I, I'm assuming, looking around, I know most of us, have, did you choose Jesus? Did you just decide I'm going to yoke up with him? And once you did, are we continuing to make that choice every week of our life, every day of our life? When the, uh, when the decisions come, uh, when the opportunities come, God, is this what you want for my life? God, is this what I'm supposed to do? Is this the person I'm supposed to be spending my time with? Is this how I'm supposed to be investing my money, investing my life? I'd rather have Jesus than anything. My son, some of us need to make a decision here tonight and say, Lord, I choose you. Somebody up there. Amen. Verse number nine says this, and Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. And offer him for a sin offering. There was a purpose behind it all. In chapter, in verses 16 through 19, of Leviticus, it talks about this, but you may you may remember this, these verses from the New Testament. Hebrews 9 and verse 22 said, and Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, 
without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Blood had to be shed. Some would even say blood was spilled. I know that raises our hair up, but I, I realize and I know that every drop of blood was accounted for, every drop of blood was meant for, but you can't help but think about the imagery as they began to beat him on the back and the amount of blood that was shed from him, from him, from his body as he scraped up and down that tree and he, uh, uh, he spoke in the words of agony and the blood would trickle down that cross. Uh, it was almost like a blood bath. Everywhere he went, there was blood there. I'm glad, hallelujah, Every, hey, hey, hey. everywhere he still goes, there's blood, there's blood enough to save every lost sinner. The purpose of it, John, said in John 1 and verse 29 the next day John says Jesus uh, coming unto him and saith behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world he bled and he died so that you and I could have salvation full and free he bled and died to take away our sin I like the old song that said, it's still the blood that saves from sin. I mean, we've got a modern day uh, attitude about a whole lot of stuff. There's a lot of people that would like to take the blood out of salvation, the blood out of the Bible, the blood out of songs, uh, uh, but it's still the blood. It's only the blood. It will always be the blood. That washes away sin. <laughs> with the cry of every goat, with the bleeding of every sheep, with the lowing of all the oxen, with the chirp of the turtle dove, God was writing a song of the redeemed. It was a picture of Calvary. Every animal that would have to give its life. God was making a picture of Calvary. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus was led to a cross. He was nailed to that cross. He was hoisted, naked, bleeding, and dying between heaven and earth for you and for me. And the Bible says in the book of John, Chapter number 19. Pilate wrote a title, put it on the cross. The writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. You know, when you read something like that in the Bible, it would do you well to back up, to pause, to study it out. Why did God inspire John to say that it was written in Hebrew, it was written in Greek, and it was written in Latin? Why would God do that? Now, we ain't Catholic. In fact, we're just about anti-Catholic. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, however, if you ever see a Catholic crucifix, they have these letters that are affixed to that crucifix, and they are a uh, transliteration, I believe the term is, uh, in Latin. Now, what does that mean? The New Testament, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. All right? Most of the people, uh, that was like English nowadays. Almost everybody spoke Greek. They knew that language. 
The New Testament was written in Greek. However, if you take that and you take it back into the Hebrew, the there was a uh, not real far from there, there was a temple that was set up, and it was a temple set up to Zeus and of uh, Pergamus, and it it, 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 it said he had a title there. It said Zeus of Pergamus, king and god, and they had this. A symbol of called the Omicron. So the Omicron is a Greek term. Remember the Bible said that they wrote it in what? In Greek, in Hebrew, and in Latin. If you take that and translate it back into the Hebrew, when they had, I don't know, some of you may remember taking shorthand. Uh, have you ever seen those court reporters? Uh, they don't write a whole word. They just take a symbol or just the first initial and use it uh, to help them understand what was going on. Those words meant this in Latin. That I-N-R-I that you see there. It means Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth King of the Jews in Latin just like it did there in Greek. But if you take those four little symbols, y'all just need to hold on because we're getting ready to go somewhere. And you translate that I-N-R-I back into the Hebrew. You get the letters Y-H-V-A. When the scribes would write the name of holy God, Jehovah, they would not write that name, but they'd write Y. H V A. Whenever God sent his son, he let him put up on the cross. This is God himself on the cross. That's why they got so mad and said, take it down. You ought not wrote that. And see, there was a, a custom that would happen. I, I told you about them little lambs at the Passover. There was a custom that would take place, uh, Miss Joyce. Uh, when you had those lambs, uh, they wanted to be sure. Uh, whenever they went, uh, this is past uh, after they left uh, Egypt and all that, and they still would offer the, those lambs. Uh, they wanted to be sure that their family was accounted for and that their lamb went to their family. So what they do is take a little tag and they <laughs> they put the family name on that lamb. When God put His Son on the cross, He put the hey hey He put the family name on the lamb. I'm glad, hallelujah, for the atonement that's found in the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That's the sacrifice that is spoke of in the goat. Let me ask you this. Will you, have you, accepted that sacrifice? Preacher, I'm trying to make it best I can. Preacher, one of these days I'll be good enough. Preacher, I'm going to give more. Preacher, I'm gonna, one of these days I'm going to join. Preacher, one of these days I'm going to None of that. Not one thing that you can do will make you fit for heaven. You have to accept the sacrifice of the only begotten Son of God. Here's my favorite part of this. The sending of the goat. Verse 10 said, But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord. See, there was no animal that could do what Jesus did. There was no priest that could do what Jesus did. He is our Passover, but he's also our atonement. He is from the first to the last. He gave his life, but he also presented his life alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. In that process, sin 
was transferred. In the book of uh, or chapter 21 there in our text, the Bible says, And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel. Everything that the nation of Israel had done wrong, he would confess over this goat. The Bible said it. He would confess the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. Jesus hung on the cross. The Bible says for the space of three hours, there was darkness over all the land. Many people believe that this was the time that the sins of all mankind were placed on Jesus. Many also would say that this was when God himself, remember when Jesus cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Many people believe that God himself turned his back on his only son. He could not bear to look at his son with all the sins. Sin was transferred. I was not born 2,000 years ago. I'm getting older, but I ain't that old. I was not born 2,000 years ago. Every sin that I would ever commit was all future back then. Anything that you'll ever get into, God saw it. And the Bible said, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet Sinners. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to think about that God saved me as almost a 14-year-old boy. I had enough sin racked up right then uh, that I needed to be saved, amen. But I had a whole lot of stuff from then till now uh, that I wish would have never happened. And I failed God miserably, but I'm glad, hallelujah, I'm glad when he looked at all my sin, he went to the very end of time, and he went to the very beginning of time, and he scooped it all up, and he scraped it all up, and he put it on the cross, and hallelujah, my sins have been washed away. Sin is transferred, sin is taken. Verse 21 said that he shall send him away. And the, verse 22 says, the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the land not inhabited. They shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Second Corinthians 5 said, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Sin was taken away. In verse 21, the latter part said, it was taken by, a hand, by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Now, I may have shared this before, but it's worth repeating. What they would do on this day is they would take that priest or that fit in the hand of a fit man, the Bible said, would take this scapegoat that all the sins have been confessed over, that the sins have been transferred onto. Now, let me pause. They had to do this every year. The Bible said in Hebrews 10, but this man, after, after that he offered sin for sin one time, sat down forever at the right hand of God. We've got a better sacrifice in Jesus. But Every year, they would have this pageantry. And they would take, and that one lamb or that goat would be slain. He would be the Passover. Then the, the atonement part of it come. They would confess the sin over this other goat. They'd take this man and take him out into the wilderness. And the wilderness, when you read in the Bible, is typically speaking of the desert. Many people believe they would take them so far 
and in such a place that that goat uh, would probably fall on its own, die on its own, would not be able to live, and it'd never make it back. They made, they made sure they went far enough that the goat would never come back. Aren't you glad, hallelujah, God took your sins far enough that they'll never come back. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed my sin. Amen. But I, I, I love this. What they would do is when they take them way out there in the desert, they'd have stations set up because they wanted to get word back. There was a whole crowd of people waiting at Jerusalem, waiting to hear the words. And they would take them out there and then they, the priest would come back waving a flag. And just as soon as he got in sight, one of those at the other station would see that flag and he'd start waving his flag. And then the, on the way back, they'd look and see that flag waving. And they'd start waving their flag. And they sat in hushed silence in Jerusalem because the holy was happening. And God had his wrath and, and the, uh, the, the payment for their sin had to be appeased and satisfied. So as they sat there in, in, in silence, they sat there waiting. And as every flag would pop up, making its way back to Jerusalem, finally the last flag would start, hallelujah, would start to wave. And then the priest would say, your sins are gone. Hallelujah. Bless his name. My sins are gone. They're all taken away. Bless his name for the atonement. Uh, I tell you what, John finds that song. Uh, I need somebody to work the computer. Can one of y'all find the words for Robert? Come up here, Robert. We're going to do something off the cuff. Come on. I like this song. Just don't play something until, until it happens. It said that I could still go free. It should be under Robert. Find that I could still go free. You remember that song? This is a Henson one, man. You ain't got to have a word problem. I want you to stand with me all over the room. How many of us can rejoice that I could still go free? Just hit it as soon as you find it there, Brother uh, Brother John, good to have you with us tonight. Oh, Lord, touch us in Jesus' name.
But because of your mercy, because of your grace, I am washed in the blood. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Lord, I want to thank you. Have to come and grab a, these cards tonight. We need some folk that are going to take some of these cards and pray with and for some folk over this week. Oh, God, help us, Lord, I pray. Here we come. Here we come. Lord, thank you. Thank you. I don't deserve it, but thank you. Oh, that I can go free. Thank you. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, help us. Oh, God. Thank you for the mercy of God, for your grace. God, you're better to us than we ever deserve. Yes. Lord, so that tonight, Lord, for me to stop it. This falls and say thank you a thousand times. Lord, you, you've been good to us. Thank you for that. Lord, I pray God for every need and every heart, every difficulty, every situation. Lord, I pray God for Miss Nancy. I pray God for Eric. I pray for Pauline. Lord, I pray for uh, this dear sister getting ready to go through some cancer treatments. Oh, God. Lord, you know the needs. The needs are great, but you're great. God, tonight we're asking you, we're pleading on behalf of the blood that was shed for us. You said through your, his stripes we are healed. God, I still believe you're a healer. I pray God for every need. God, for those that are lost and undone without God or His Son, I pray, God, that you would convict them, draw them, bring them to a place of repentance. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, how you've helped. Lord, touch it, move. 
in the hearts and lives of your children in every situation, in every circumstance. Oh God, show yourself real and mighty one more time. Oh God, you're good to us. What a Savior. What a wonderful Savior. Oh, Lord, touch us in Jesus' name.